This example problem demonstrates how to solve multi-objective optimization problems in model predictive control or dynamic optimization. In many cases we might have high priority items like perhaps safety constraints. Um, you know, priority two might be something like an environmental constraint uh, or regulations and then a priority three might be to maximize uh, the economics of a process. So let's just consider this plot right here <clears throat> where we have some boundaries. Okay, so this one right here, those are our safety margins for this pressure. Let's say it's a pressure inside a reactor during a startup. Okay, and so we have some safety margins for, uh, for the startup. We also might have some environmental constraints. So this one would be a slower startup or maybe to a lower value. So we want to stay within this region, but this is going to be priority number two and this is going to be priority number one. Okay, and so we would want to stay perhaps in this region right here, and then uh, when it violates uh, the environmental constraint, we would want to perhaps hug the lower line there of the, um, of the safety constraint. But let's throw a third uh, factor in there as well. This is gonna be our third one, and that's gonna be the economic constraint. So, we may want to maximize the economics of this process as well. And so we would, let's say we start at one. In this region right here, all three constraints are met. So there's an additional degree of freedom there where we might want to go right to the upper bound, uh, be able to maximize um, some of the economics. Um, and then when it reaches this um, you know, uh, be able to prioritize between economics and environmental constraints, it's going to uh, hug the upper part. Okay, so from right here to right here, it's going to hug the upper part um, to be able to maximize the economics, uh, but still stay within the safety and environmental constraints. And then from this point right here till the end, we're going to perhaps hug the um, this lower line to try to minimize the deviation of the environmental constraint. Okay, so let's go ahead and implement that in, uh, in practice. So we have, if you come to the course website, um, we're just gonna go to apmonitor.com. Okay, and then uh, go to slash uh, DO for dynamic optimization. And then on the very right, if you go down, uh, to multi-objective, we're going to visit this link, and it has this problem here, okay, with this exercise and uh, this this uh, worksheet here. Um, and if you come down here, here's the solution. So go ahead and download this, and um, and then open it, and then go ahead and extract it as well. Okay, so make sure you extract the files before you run them, and this has it in MATLAB and also in Python. I'm just going to open up the uh, Python script. Okay, so right here I have um, the Python script that will run this optimization problem and, and do the multi-objective optimization for us. The key thing about this is it's using an L1 uh, norm to prioritize the objectives. And then I can give the weighting um, on a set point high and set point low. So this one has the highest uh, let's see, this one is going to be the environmental constraint. I'll give that a weighting of 100. Okay, the operational constraint or economic constraint is going to be 50. And then the safety constraint, okay, safety constraint is going to be 200. Okay, so this is the highest priority right here, um, uh, followed by the environmental and then operational or economic constraint. Okay, and then um, I do have a slight... Um, you know, a uh, D-max, I'm limited to one times 10 to the fifth, so no real limitation there. D-cost, I'm not adding a cost for change, but that could also be part of it too. We don't want to have our manipulated variable move too much. Um, but let's also add in here, so I'll run it once and then let's change it just a little bit. Okay, so I'll go ahead and save it and then run it. Um, and then it's going to do this simultaneous optimization. Um, so you can see uh, this first one, that's going to be, I'm going to move this one out of the way for now. The Y is going to be our, um, 
that's going to be our environmental constraint. So you can see it's satisfied in this region, and then at this point it is not satisfied anymore. This is our economic constraint, Z, and uh, you can see that um, it tries to uh, meet this region right here. It has a third priority though, and then the safety constraint is going to always be satisfied. Okay, so that's just looking at them individually. If we put them all on the same plot, then we got the, uh, the similar to what the sketch that I showed before, where it's going to then um, minimize movement here, follow the economic constraint, and then uh, follow the environmental constraint, and then the safety constraint. Okay, but let's let's just try to maximize. We see there's an opportunity right here. We want to maximize the environmental, or sorry, maximize the uh, economic. Um, so I'm going to come back into my uh, script and let's just put a cost there on the um, operational. Okay, so I'm going to uh, just copy one of these lines and then change that to Z dot cost. And I'm going to put a negative one right there. Okay, so that means maximize. If I put a negative one for a cost, meaning that if I produce more, of that, that it's going to uh, be favorable for the minimization problem. Okay, and then if I run it again, um, I'll go ahead and save that, and then run it one more time, and then we'll see that it's, it's gonna try to maximize that um, right in the area uh, where I'm meeting all of the constraints. It's gonna go up to this upper bound of the environmental constraint, and then continue on the environmental constraint, and then hit uh, the safety constraint after that. Okay, so this is an example of multi-objective optimization, and we're using the, um, in this case, the L1 norm. There's a little bit more information about the L1 norm, objective function. If you just come to the uh, control part, and then go to the control objectives, and then it talks a little bit about how to formulate this with slack variables and, um, and inequality constraints.